Hey, welcome back. Uh, tonight's lesson, we're going to create a assembly. Uh, it's going to be kind of a top-down type modeling assembly or an in-context in modeling. And what that is is we're actually going to model all of these parts in an in individual in one part file, and then we're going to create all of these individual part files by these bodies that we have here. Now, normally you cannot apply different materials to an individual part body while it's inside of the model itself. So what we've got to do is we've got to save these bodies out and then we can apply our materials as we go. Uh, we're going to use like a 1010 stainless and then maybe some nylon, uh, 1010 here and 1010, um, not really stainless, but a, a steel, a mild steel. So we've got dimensions with uh, this. This was provided to me, and we're just going to roll with uh, what we got here to to come up with our model. Um, this really can get kind of confusing when you've got a fairly complicated model, but this was relatively simple. We're going to start out with just a block, put a hole in it. We'll create create this strap uh, secondarily. Um, we'll probably create this little mounting nut as a third type item, and then our hex bolt as the last. Item. I'm not really too worried about this rail that we're going to mount this thing on. Uh, we're probably going to do some evaluations on where our, how much our weights are based on the parts that we have here. So this is also a little bit different. This one is in uh, metric and most everything that I've done in the past on these videos has been in inches. Uh, so we're going to make a little quick change uh, to our initial setup. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get started with our, our modeling. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new part. Uh, mine's going to default two inches, and I'm going to show you a quick way to change this. All right, so I'm in part one. I come down here to the bottom right-hand corner, and notice it's in inch pounds per inch pounds and seconds. So I want to um, use this up chevron, and I'm going to change it over to millimeters. So make sure that we've got that. And our first thing, first order, uh, we'll select extruded ball space. Make sure your features tab is selected. So extruded ball space. I'm going to select the front plane and I'm going to come up and I'm going to select a center rectangle and I'm going to start on my origin. So I'll place it here, pull it up, and in smart dimension uh, we look like we're 86 across um, and then we're 38 high times 2. So we said this was 86 and then the height of it was. 38 and then I'm going to use my multiplication symbol times 2 so it's now 76 millimeters. Alright so with this I'm fully defined I've got my basic shape ready to roll I exit my sketch I should be in the extrusion command and I want to use um, the references that the software has given to me so I want to use the mid plane command and this part was I think 30 minutes 30 millimeters thick it is. So we're going to go 30 millimeters. And we also want to make sure that it is mid plane because we want it to be centered up around the um, around the planes because we're going to use that for reference later. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to place the hole in the very center of this. So let's select extrude cut. I want to pick the space here that's looking at us. The part should orient normal to you. Come up and grab a regular circle. Pull it out, place it down, and that circle has got a radius of 26 millimeters. So it really doesn't show the full diameter because these two are now disconnected. So let's uh, put 26 in there twice. So smart dimension, we know that it's 52, but let's just make sure that our math is correct. So 26 times 2, and it is 52. So we go ahead and accept it, and we exit our sketch. And we're now getting ready to cut. And we want to make sure that we just cut through all. We don't really want to think about it again if we change the thickness later. So we'll go ahead and accept it. So now we have our basic shape here. We've got the hole and the rectangle. Now we also have these fillets on here. It looks like we've got four of them. Um, and they are going to be about four millimeters. Yes, R4. And four places. See how long I had to search just to find, you know, where the radiuses were on this thing. So let's go up here. Um, I'm going to use my Control Seven command to put it in isometric. I want to select a fillet. I want to make sure that I have just a uh, 
a constant size fillet. I want it to be four millimeters, so I change the size. I'm going to use a little help here, and I'm going to select this edge. And this little fly out up here, it allows me to come and take a preview, and I can select these connected faces and its three other edges. I select it, and it picks them all for me. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that with my green check. We now have that that command. Um, so let's go ahead and put this strap up on the top. It looks like it's four millimeters thick and everything else follows along with it. Um, so let's create an extruded boss base on this very top surface. So I select it. Now I don't want to draw that sketch again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert entities. And it's going to ask me what I want to convert. So I want to select this face and I want to accept it with the green check button. Now I look at that and it's created a sketch for me. My sketch is fully defined. Now I want to exit my sketch. Let's create an extrusion. It kept uh, 30 millimeters in the cache from before. It's not what I want. I want four millimeters. And I also want to make sure that I unselect merge results if it is selected because I want two separate bodies. All right. So let's go ahead and accept that. So now we want to verify that we have two bodies here, um, and we do because it shows us the body count right here. I'm going to expand this out, and it says fillet one, and then boss extrude two. And we can kind of come down here and take a look, and, but we're still got some changing that we want to do. All right. So the next thing that I want to, the next feature that I want in here is going to be this counterboard. It looks like we've got an eight millimeter hole um, with a 12 millimeter counterbore. It's six millimeters deep. So these holes are going to be eight in diameter, 12 inch, I mean a 12 millimeter counterbore, and a six millimeter depth counterbore. Let's go ahead and place that in there. So I'm going to use my control seven command again. Um, we'll make sure that we don't place it on this top base. I want to use the hole wizard. I also want to select a counterbore. I'm using ANSI metric. I don't really, I'm not too concerned about what type of bolt or what type of counterbore is going in here. So I want to show custom sizing. Um, so I want to make sure that it's eight millimeters that's through. The counterbore diameter is going to be 12 millimeters and the depth of that counterbore is going to be six millimeters. So I have, I want to make sure that I don't have any head clearance or near side clearance, any of that selected. Now, position-wise, so we've got our parameters set up. So I'm going to come up and select positions. Now it's asking where I want to place them. I want to roll this around on the bottom, and I'm going to place it down here. I'm going to use my Control A command to make sure that it's normal. I want to place it over in this general area, and I've got another one over in this area. All right. So now we've got a couple dimensions on here. As I'm looking at this, it's 30 millimeters across and it's 15 millimeters from this edge. I'm going to use the 15 millimeters instead of making it centered up just in case we ever uh, change the thickness of this thing because that's the way it's called out here, even though we could center it up. So let's go ahead and let's make sure that we use our smart dimension command. I want to place from here to there and that's going to be 15. Now I want a distance from here to this edge which was nine and a distance from here to here which was 68 which would make everything centered up now notice this one is still blue and this one is black so I need to add a relation I don't want to add you know 15 millimeters here just in case we change something later so I want to add a relation I want to pick this point and I also want to pick this point and I want to make those two horizontal it's got dimension three called out in here, but I'm not too worried about it as well. So we select horizontal and we should be fully defined. And I come down and I'll take a look and we are fully defined. So I'm ready to accept this feature command. So I say yes. And I want to verify that it went through the strap as well. And it did. Uh, if it didn't go through there, you may have to select the bodies and, and change that. So we now have this counterboard in here use my control 7 command this would be a good time to save this part now I want to make sure that I save it in a folder so I'm going to create a new folder I'm going to call mine the junk folder I'm going to open that junk folder up and I'm going to call this part junk 
All right, so we've got our part file saved, and this is where you want to make sure that you're kind of saving things as you go along. You'd hate to lose that work if the power went out. All right, so the next thing that we want to take a look at is we've got this little um, mounting tab down here at the bottom. It looks as if it's 12 millimeters in diameter. Um, it's going to be 11 millimeters tall. Uh, has a 14 millimeter square base, and it's got a relief cut over here on the sides. Uh, also has a seven millimeter tapped hole that's going to go through it. So let's go ahead and create this particular piece as well. All right. So in our model, I want to create an extruded ball space, and it's going to ask where I want it. I want to put it on this counterboard. Okay. So select this counterboard. I'm going to come and pick a circle. So I've selected the circle command. I tickle this outer edge. My center point shows up. So I'll pull it out, place it down. I don't really care how big it is because I'm going to tell it how big I want it with the dimension. This is going to be 12. Now we're fully defined. All right. So I want to extrude this. And we said that this thing was 11 millimeters overall height. But if we take 11 millimeters and we subtract 3 millimeters from it, that's going to give us uh, 8 millimeters. So let's extrude this thing out 8 millimeters. All right, so exit our sketch. I want it to be 8 millimeters. And I know I want to make sure that we do not merge results. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Now, one thing that I want to do is I want to actually hide this body here. So I can click on it here, uh, click on my glasses, or yours is probably the eyeball. And now I want to select an, another extruded ball space. I want it to be on this face here. Now I'm going to use the polygon command, and I want to change the, si the number of sides to four. I'm going to come tickle the edge of this. My uh, center should show up on here. So I'll pick it, pull it out, place it down anywhere. I'm going to use my escape command a couple of times. Now I want to make one of these lines either horizontal or vertical. So I'll pick one of the lines. My fly out comes out and I select horizontal. All right. So we said that this thing was 14 millimeters square. So I'm going to say 14. Now we've got this sketch on here. When I exit my sketch, it should automatically move to the extrusion command. And this is going to be three millimeters and now I'm going to leave merge results selected so what it's going to merge it's going to merge this body and this body it will not merge this one because we have this other one hidden out so let's go ahead and accept it and we should be 11 millimeters tall so let's just evaluate to verify that everything we've got so I come up and I select evaluate tab then I select measure I want to pick this face and I want to pick this top face and we should be 11 millimeters across the, the y-axis right here. And we are, so we're good. All right, so I'm going to use my Control-7 command. And I need to create these relief cuts here. This thing has these relief cuts. It's going to slide down this uh, mounting rail. All right, so let's go ahead and let's create that next. All right, so... Let's come up to features. We want to select extruded cut. I want to pick this face here. It's going to move around like that. I'm going to use a corner rectangle command. I'm going to place one here and then I'm going to start here and place another one. Now I want to add a few relations. Make sure that we cut this box cleared out. So I'm going to right click and clear selections. Now this vertical line and this vertical line, I want to make sure that they are equal. Uh, this horizontal line and this horizontal line, I want to make sure that they are also equal. Now two dimensions should take care of this. This thing was going to be three millimeters tall and the distance between those was eight millimeters. So I verify that we are fully defined. We are fully defined. And now I want to exit my sketch and I want to cut through all because I don't want to have to worry about it. It looks like my material is cutting the correct way and I accept it. Now another thing I want to do is I want to hide this one now. So let's come up to this top body and we want to hide it. So we should have three bodies that are available to us. Now we can know that we've got a, a hole in here. So let's use our hole wizard. 
This time, instead of a counterbore, we want to use a straight tap. Uh, we want to make sure that we are in ANSI metric, that it is a tapped hole. It could be a bottoming tapped hole, not a straight pipe, or a, just a standard tapped hole. That's what we're going to want. We want to make sure that we are um, M7 with 1. We don't want any custom sizing going on here. And we want to go through all. Okay. We can call out a thread class, but that's for another day. All right, so positions, where do we want this? So we come select positions. I want to pick this top surface here. I want to use my control A command if it doesn't orient normal to me. I come tickle this outer edge. The center point shows up. I place it there. Make sure you're fully defined. We can accept it. And we now have a tapped hole in here. It doesn't look like a threaded hole, but that's what's going to be called out on our drawing. So user control 7 and I don't really want to put another one in here. Um, the reason being is we're going to split these things apart a little while and we're going to mirror over our bolt and everything else that goes with this. All right so the next thing that I'm going to want to do is I want to create an extruded boss base. I want it on this very top surface of our strap so make sure that all of your parts are showing. So I want to pick our, all of your bodies are showing, not necessarily parts. This is one part, but it has multiple bodies in here. So I'll pick this top surface of the strap. I want to use the polygon command again. I select it. Um, this time I want to make it six sides. I'm going to come tickle this edge. I want to show the center point of this. I'm going to pull it out to where one of these points are pay, uh, facing over in this direction. Hit escape command a couple times. So we now have this uh, polygon with an inscribed circle and all these lines are tangent to that circle. So I want to add a relation. As I add a relation, I want to pick one of these most horizontal lines and I want to make it horizontal. Now the head size of a uh, seven millimeter bolt is 11 millimeters. So I'm gonna say, uh, pick the circle, the inscribed circle and I'll make it 11 millimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept this. I'm gonna rotate this thing around. So now our sketch, we're ready to uh, extrude this. So I exit my sketch. I want the thickness of this to be five millimeters. And I also want to make sure that I do not merge results. So I uncheck merge results and I'm going to accept this command as well. So now we have this, 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 and this. Now I'm going to hide this and I'm going to hide this. And I'm going to hide this. So what I want to do is I want to create an extruded ball space. I'm going to use Control 7. Let's just make sure we're all on the same page, okay? So I want to select an extruded ball space, and I want it to be on the underneath side of this hex. So I pick this. Now, one problem that I have is I can't see any reference circle or anything else. Now, under ball, did my last boss extrude? I had a reference sketch. So I can expand this thing out and now notice this thing is ghosted out. But what I want to do is I want to pick it and I want to show it because I want to use it for some reference geometry. So I want to come up and select a circle. I can then place it on the center of this. And we said that this was a seven millimeter. So I'll place this down, seven. We're fully defined. And now, as I was looking at this earlier, I noticed that uh, that the distance of this bolt is awfully long. It says that it's 92 millimeters long. I do not believe that it's going to be 92 millimeters long. I believe that it's 82 millimeters long because our part is only 76 plus 4, so that's 80. If we had it 10 extra millimeters, it's going to try to drive itself through that rail. So let's go ahead and correct this while we're at it. So we want to extrude this, so we exit our sketch. Should still be in the extrude command. So I'm going to make my distance. 82. I want to verify that it's not running into any other body, so we go ahead and accept it as well. All right. So I'm use the Control 7 command. Now this is a very uh, this plane. I mean this uh, bolt kind of sharp up on the top. Not really what I want. Now I'm going to hide my sketch again, the one that we created that boss. I'm going to hide it. Now I want to create some little feature up here at the top. Let's create a revolve cut up here, okay? So we select revolve cut. 
It's going to ask what face or plane we want. I want to use the front plane. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom way in on this. I'm also going to get a center axis. I want to start at the midpoint here, pull it up and place it. So now we have an axis for our revolve cut. Now I'm going to draw a shape. Um, let's not do it. Let's just do it here. So I've got this. And I want to create a three-point arc. All right. So I'll pick here and here. And I'm going to pull my arc up in this general area. So smart dimension. Let's make this say 0.75. Let's make this two, and let's make this about 3.5, okay? So we wanna zoom way in on this and make sure that we don't have any reversals. I didn't make this tangent because I really don't want it tangent. Now, I wanna place it here so we can revolve around this. There's a couple ways we can do it. We can add a relation and do it the hard way, or we can come up and click and hold down with your mouse key, drag it over here and put it on this corner and now we're fully defined. So we now have a sketch that we can revolve around. All right, so let's exit our sketch. We should still be in revolve cut. Um, so this is what's gonna be removed from the top of this. We wanna go ahead and accept that as well. And that's gonna be our hex bolt. All right, so we can also, let's just, let's not worry too much about the cosmetic threads or anything right now. So let's take a look at our bodies. So I want to show them all. Now, when I look at our drawing, we have one, two, three, four, five. When I look at our model, we have one, two, three, four bodies. And it also tells us that right there. So I didn't have to count it. So I really need to split this thing in half, okay? Alright, so what I want to do is I want to make sure that this one, our very first one, is the only one showing. So I'm gonna hide this one, hide this one, and hide this one. So we now have only this body. Now remember I told you when we were using the planes earlier for our advantage, uh, I wanna hover over the top plane. I wanna select it. And now I wanna come up to the insert portion, insert, features, and then split. So I wanna split this body in half. And now, I'm going to use my top plane for my trimming surface. I want to cut all bodies. I want to say cut. And I also do not want to consume the bodies because it will eat those like lunch. So I come over here and I select, my, or select these two. And I accept it. So now I have five bodies out here. I have split one. Now notice it moved it down from here all the way down. So it's kind of keeping that in the order that we did things. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on this one that's not showing. Hold my shift key down and click on the upper one that's not showing. Release my shift key and then show those as well. So we have these five bodies out here. Now I'm going to rename these. All right. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click and then hover and then click again. And I'm going to call this the strap. I'm going to select this one, click again, and I'm going to call it the mount. This one, the cut revolve, I'm going to select it, click again, and I'm going to say hex bolt. All right, so this one, I'm going to click on the right, hook, click again, and I'm going to call it the top. Um, then the last one, I want to click, I want to click again. And I want to call it the bottom. So now we've got these bodies named. Remember I said that we wanted to add material to it. Well, can't really add material just yet. All right, so I'm going to use my Control-7 command to put it in isometric. I want to save it. Now, you notice that we've got a hole here and a hole here. We've got a, a mount down here and we don't have one here. All right, I'm not real concerned with that because this part is going to be used in multiple areas. Um, I could have mirrored it inside of here, but I really don't want to do it because what I want to do when I create an assembly, I want to create a bill of materials, and I don't want to have these as individual parts, okay? We're going to mirror it in the assembly, and we're going to use that as far as our bill goes. All right, so make sure that you've got your part saved.
Now, this is where when we created that folder earlier, we're going to save everything in the folder. So come over here to where it says solid bodies and I want to use a right click command. So right mouse click and I want to save the bodies. Now watch what happens when I hit this little uh, the save icon. It automatically names these things for me. Um, I don't want to consume cut bodies again because if I want to go back to it, I want to take a look at what's going on and I want to be able to grab them fairly easily. All right, so we're going to save these in our part file. It may yell at me about the template um, being a different, different, uh, different unit of the measurements. If it does say, yeah, go ahead and convert that and make sure that you're in uh, millimeters and not in inches. So now we've got all of these bodies saved. I come down and I look at my window and I don't have anything open. So let's go up here and we're going to say file, open. And in that folder, in my junk folder, it's got the bottom, the hex bolt, the junk part itself, which I don't have to open because we already have it open, the mount, the strap, and the top part. So I'm going to pick this one. I'm going to hold my control key down and I'll select everything that I want to open. So now I have all of these parts selected and I'm going to say open. Alright, so now we got five or six parts open up. I'm going to expand everything out. So now what I want to do is I want to create an assembly from these parts. So let's select file. Uh, make an assembly from part. So we have all of these over here. Um, with this, I think I want to start on the mount because typically you mount things to whatever you are mounting. So I'll select a mount. Now, if I move my mouse over here and place it down somewhere, it's going to create a little bit of a, an issue when, when I try to place these things. So what I want to do is I just want to use this green check or my OK command and that's going to put that where we actually model it in in the uh, model itself. It's going to use the same origin. So that's why it was very important to keep these things uh, oriented to our, our planes and keep everything pretty symmetric. So now we want to insert a component. So let's use the bottom piece next. Now if I drag this bottom piece out here and try to try to put it here, we're going to have to do a lot of mates, but I just want to model it I want to place it where we modeled it earlier. So I accept it there. I rotate it around. Sure enough, that thing is right where we want it. Use my control 7 command. So let's go ahead and save this while we've got this going on. So we want to save all. I'm going to call this junk as well. Now notice I've got a junk solid part and this is going to be a junk with a dot uh, assembly. I think it's dot ASM, ASEM or I can't remember what the suffix actually is. All right, so now we have two parts in here and they're both fixed. So control seven. The next thing that we want to add, let's think about this. We want to add the top portion of it. So we say insert component. I'm going to pick the top. Now if I place it over here, I'd have to align everything. I don't want to do that. I want to go the lazy way out. So I hit the green check again. So we now have three parts out here. They're all fixed. We don't have to worry about any interference or anything else. So let's insert another component. I think the strap was the next thing that was going to go on top of this thing. So I'm going to use my green check again, say OK. And now we want to insert our last component, which was the hex bolt. So let's come out and select the hex bolt. I want to place it where it's supposed to be. But in real life, if we only put this hex bolt in here, this is going to rotate around. All of this stuff can float around. So let's let's mirror something. All right. So I don't want to use these plans. I want to use a plane off of off of say this bottom part. So I'm going to expand this thing out. I want to come down here and hover over the planes. The front plane is not the one I want. The top plane is not the one I want. But the right plane is what I want. So I want to mirror this across. So it's just like looking in the mirror. So we want to come up here and we want to say mirror components. Notice it says the mirror plane. I'm using the right plane off the bottom one of junk part. Okay. Now the components that I want is the hex bolt and the mount. I can pick them over here in the graphics area or I can come here and I can say I want the hex bolt and I want the mount. And they turn blue and let's go ahead and accept it. And we now have 
several parts in here. So we've got our five original parts plus two more, so we should have seven total. So we want to save this. But now, the problem that I'm having is these don't really have material applied to them. So I'm going to come over here. I want to select on this icon, the icon itself. I want to open that part. Now when we look at this, um, this is going to be a 1010 steel. So let's go back. To our mount, and hit the F button for my fit command. I want to come up to my material. I want to right select. I want to edit the material. It's going to be a steel and 1010. It says it's hot roll. I'm really not too concerned about that just yet because we're more concerned about the weight and everything else. So now we want to go ahead and save that. I'm going to close this out to where my my features. All right, now this uh, upper mount, lower mount they're going to be it's got polypropylene in here let's just make this a nylon okay let's come up here to our material we want to right click we want to edit the material uh, it's going to be in plastics and plastics are here and let's just use a nylon 101 so apply that and close and we got a nylon 101 so let's close it out as well yes we want to save that Alright, All right. so now the bottom, let's open it. It doesn't have a material, so let's right click on it, edit the material. We want it to be a nylon 101. Apply it and close. I'm going to close this part out. Alright, so we've got the mount, we've got the bottom, we've got the top, and now we need to work on the strap. So let's edit the strap, open the part. It doesn't have a material. Um, the strap is strap is 1010 as well, so let's come down here. Uh, we want to right click on it, edit material. Uh, we want it to be in the steel, and we want it to be 1010. Apply close save and we're going to close this and now the hex bolt I think it was also 1010 um, doesn't really say what the hex bolt is this says that it's a heavy duty I'm not real sure what we're, we're going to do let's go ahead and make it a, a 1010 as well and now let's make it a 4340 so we're going to right click edit material and we want it to be 4340 and we'll just say that it's annealed apply that and close and now we're we want to save it and it's going to ask us if we want to rebuild everything and we do want to rebuild everything so now we have materials applied to all of the parts use a control 7 command we want to save it we want to make sure that everything is re is uh, built now one thing that we want to do is we want to uh, create an exploded view of this particular part so I'm going to come up to Exploded View, select it. I want to pick this component and this component, and I want to drag those up, and I'm going to drag them up pretty high. Okay. And after I do that, I'm going to say Done. Then I want to grab the strap. I want to drag it up pretty close to the bolts. I'm going to say Done. I want to pick this component, drag it up as well. Done. Pick this component drag it up I'm going to say done now I'm going to pick these two I'm just going to drag them down just a little bit to where we can see everything and then done and then I want to go ahead and accept that and I'm going to use my F command for fit so it's going to center everything up for us so that's going to be our exploded view so let's go ahead and save that now with that saved we want to create a drawing from this so we want to say file make a drawing from assembly All right, now I'm going to come use, now notice it gives me all the views of everything that we have. I want to come over here and drag 
out the isometric exploded view. If yours doesn't show exploded view in the default configurations, you can make sure that it shows exploded right here. Show in the exploded state. I want to use a little bit larger, so let's go two to three. I'm sure, looks pretty good. Um, you may have to arrange yours. Now, the reason why I only put one bolt and one mount in here is because we've really got two of each, but we wanted to keep the same part number for this. All right, so now what I want to do is let's go ahead and save this out also. Just leave, let it stay defaulted to what it's going to name it. All right, so we want to select the annotations tab up here. Now, with that being said, we want a bill of materials. I want to go ahead and select bill of materials. I'm just going to use a standard bill, uh, top level only. I'm going to go ahead and accept this, and I'm going to drag it out here, and I'm going to dock it up here in this top right corner. And then I can expand this thing out if I want to, if I wanted to see some other stuff. All right. So now I really don't know what these parts are. You know, even though we know that the mouth is here, we know that the bottom part's here, we know that the top is here, the straps here, and the bolts are there. Um, so what I want to do is I want to give these a little bit of description, but I don't know which part's which, okay? Because if you had a hundred of these, there's no way to keep that straight. Let's come over here and let's select uh, the balloon auto balloon command, and then just pick this view box that we have here. Go ahead and accept it with your green check. And now, notice number five up here, it is only pointing to one. Uh, so let's use our control command. And this little node right here, we want to come over here and we want to place another one. Now notice I've got an arrowhead and I've got a dot. This arrowhead is pointing to an edge. This dot is pointing to a surface. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to drag this little arrowhead and point to the same surface. So part number five is hex bolt. So we do know that we've got two of those. Now let's do the same thing with the uh, with the little mount. So I'm going to come pick my little arrow, hold my control key down, grab this little node, drag it over here and place it on that. Same thing. I've got it on a surface and I've got it on an edge. So I click this. I'm going to put this on the surface as well. So I kind of want them to be consistent. You can do the same thing with all of these as well. So we have Part number one, part number two, part number three, part number four, and part number five. These things are on a magnetic line. They kind of keep things uh, straight up and down. You can still drag them around wherever you want to. If you left them on the magnetic line, you can drag everything over. Um, not too concerned about that magnetic line. Though. All right, so now we can actually come over here and say what these particular parts are. It does have it in here because we changed it. But I'll just want to call it mount and then the next one we can add a little bit more description B O T T O M part pipe clamp then the top part pipe clamp and then we can call this uh, top strap so you can get pretty detailed with it. And then we like this one, we don't know what size hex bolt it is. So we can say it's seven millimeter by one hex bolt. And let's give the length as well by 92. All right, so that's the way that we're gonna do that. Now, this is really not the best way to do this, but uh, we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a sheet and then we're going to start dimensioning these particular parts. So on, I want to come down here and add a sheet. I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to go to my properties and I don't want to display my sheet format. You're, you're going to need to uh, have your title block on here, but what I want to do is give myself a little bit of space so we can work something out. So we go over here to view layout. Uh, we say model view. Oh, I left them. I closed all my parts out. So I want to come down here and I want to open this part. So I select it. The little flyout opens up. So now I have this. We come back to our drawing. 
So we go to this sheet, and that's going to be part number one. So I'll go model view, mount, double click on it. Let's say the front view. I'm going to place it here, here, and here, and then I can dimension it. So the next one that I would do is I come down and add another sheet. I come back to our first sheet. And number two is going to be the bottom mount. So let's go ahead and we want to open it. So I select it, open, and it should be available to us in the drawing. And we want to come back to our sheet. And that was going to be sheet three. And we select model view. And we say the bottom part. So I double click on it. I think I want the top. I think I want the front view. Now, I don't really like the way that that's laid out because when I get ready to uh, to do this, it's got a counter bore in here. Um, so I'm going to select this. I want to rotate this around, let's say 90 degrees. Sure. Close. And now under my annotation, no, let's do a, uh, a, a broken out section view. So I want to pick here, 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 and here. I want to say that it's 15. Oh, look, I'm in inches. I need to I need to change this. I'm gonna hit my escape key. I want to make sure that we're in millimeters. So I'm gonna select that, and I want to say broken out section view, and let's say 15, and let's preview it, and it is what we're looking for. So that's gonna create that inside view. So now over here, what I can do is a projected view, pull it out, place it down. Now, let me show you a different way. So we've got that that's out here. So I want to create another broken out section view because I specified a dimension here. But what happens if we changed uh, the thickness of this and I had that specified dimension? So let's select broken out section view, click here, 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 and here we have that closed loop. Now it says, where do you want this? Let's come over here and pick this edge and go ahead and accept it. It is actually the same depth, but if we change that, this is going to update and it's always going to be to the center of this. So if we're trying to dimension to it and it's really not centered up, you're really not going to be able to get the dimension that you're looking for. All right, so now the other thing that we want to do is um, in our annotations, we want a hole command. So hole call out. I want to place it here, and I notice it keeps track of it. So it's eight millimeter through everything. The counter bore diameter is going to be 12 millimeters, and the depth of that counter bore is going to be six millimeters. So the next thing that we're going to want to work on is um, the top strap and the hex bolt. Uh, let's just do the hex bolt, and you can get the top strap on your own. So we're going to go up here to view layout. I'm sorry, we're going to go down here to the bottom. So let's come up here, and I want to select the hex bolt. I don't want to open it up. All right, so there's our hex bolt. We've got our material. Now I want to come over here to our drawing again, and I want to I want to go back to sheet four or whatever sheet you're on. Um, so I want to model view. I want the hex bolt. I think I want the top view. It probably needs to be bigger. Let's just place it here for just a moment. All right, so I pick on the hex bolt. I think I want this to be maybe six to one. Make it pretty big, okay? So now we're going to create a uh, a projected view from that. So we say projected view. I'm going to pull it over here and I'm going to place it down. Now this thing is entirely too big for our sheet, correct? Um, all of this is wasted space, though. I think six to one is really too big. So I'm going to select this. Let's make it four to one. All right, so my hex bolt is still too long to put on a sheet. All right, let's create what's called a break view. So let's select break. This is the view box that I want. Now it can be either horizontal lines or vertical lines, but this instance we want it to be vertical line. So I want to get rid of the, the incidental space and I want to place it from here to here. All right, now remember, we said that this extrusion was 82 millimeters long. So let's come up here and select annotation. So I want to pick from here to here, and it is 82 millimeters long. So you can kind of take a look at this dimension. So it tells you that there's a break in here. 
All of this other stuff in here is really uh, inconsequential. Now, one of the problems that I'm going to have is I can't really dimension this right here. Now, I'm going to select this and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. It's probably going to yell at me a little bit, but let's let it yell. So we're going to say 90. Yeah, it does. If you rotate it, it's going to say it's affecting this one, but we've only got one dimension out here. So now what I want to do is I want to close this out. But I need a detail view because I don't want to dimension this to here. So come back up here to view layout. We want to select a detail view. I want to come up and maybe pick the midpoint of this arc, pull it out, and then place it down somewhere in this general area. And that's going to be a view label. This should default to just A. And then we can place that up here. If you need this to be a little bit larger, this says the scale is actually 8 to 1 on it. So now we can dimension this. So smart dimension from this little endpoint to this. Pull it out. That was 2 millimeters. Uh, we've come from this edge to this endpoint, and that was 0.75. And then our fillet right here was 3.5. So just place it down here, okay? So that's that detail view. So that's kind of the gist of how you're going to get these. Make sure that you get your title blocks done. Make sure that you get all of this stuff submitted. Uh, make sure that you got your materials applied to these things. Uh, with that being said, you can then turn everything in on your uh, learning management system. And this should uh, require a pack and go and get everything saved out and get it submitted. And we will see you on the next one. Thank you very much.